will be available later in a follow-up email as well as on our YouTube channel. And as a heads up, uh, GoToTraining, the platform we are currently using is um, updating. So starting February 1st, it'll look um, a lot different, I'd say. Um, but we'll go over that more later. We'll have you know updated housekeeping and uh, more information, but just wanna give you a little heads up a week or so early. But with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Claudia. Great, thank you, Daryl. It's great to have everyone here today. Thank you so much for making the time to come and join us. Uh, I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. Um, Normally, we use this time for the DLIS discussion, which covers a bunch of different topics, as some of you may know. But if you if you don't know this, we'd love to have you join us monthly when you're interested in that in the particular topic that we're discussing, or if you just want to come on and and talk about an issue you're having. We this these gatherings are for you. Um, today, we're using this time for the Kohai User Group. And so we're, we're uh, anticipating a lot of discussion about pros and cons or frustrations or yahoos regarding uh, um, Koha. Uh, I am not an expert in Koha, so I have done the, the probably the more intelligent thing and asked a number of people to join me today who are experts or becoming experts in Koha. I've asked Susanna Gaston from Jackson County Public Library, Vicki Stever from Okaloosa, who is the Okaloosa County's Cooperative Coordinator, and Robert Speak, is that correct? Robert, am I pronouncing that correctly? Okay. It's Spike, sorry. Spike, my, my apologies. And is Hasina with us today? Is she coming? Hasina Akhtar, from, they're both from uh, Pasco County Public Library to kick off this discussion and um, share all kinds of information that they have with, with you since I'm not the expert. Uh, but please don't hesitate to jump in with your questions about COHA or anecdotes you'd like to share from your experiences in working with COHA or anything, any other topic that you just feel like you, you've got to get out there. Like I said, some of you have been using Koha for a long time and others may be in the process of just learning more about the system prior to making that huge decision to take the jump to a new um, integrated library system. Whatever the reason is, I'm very glad to have you all. Thank you for making the time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just start with a question that may or may not be uh, the best one to start with, but I, I kind of like starting with a, a, a rough uh, um, uh, question about talking about challenges that you may have encountered in working with Koha. Um, how did you handle these challenges? What, what has made you particularly frustrated? Was it easy to... to, to um, modify Koha or get around a particular problem. Uh, what's been your experience? Anybody want to jump in on that? I see Adam has joined us too, which is nice. I can jump in there, Claudia. Okay, thank you, Lucina. Uh, no problem. Um, Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, you did. Yeah. Thank so you. I think I think you asked a couple of questions maybe at the same time. So yeah, I did. if, if I bombarded yeah, you. Yeah, if I missed anything, please let me know. Um, you you ask one thing that whether it is easy to change. Um, sometimes it is. Uh, since it's an open source, um, it does work for. Um, I would say most of us, but sometimes it doesn't. Like, for example, whoever has done like Koha upgrade recently, uh, there is a bug, um, the receipt that we are unable to fix um, until it is fixed from the community, we are kind of like stuck. So you can say a couple of things. Um, it's not that 100% um, we can change it, but it is very user-friendly, I should say. Um, 
I think that was one of your question. Do you mind like if I miss anything? I just whatever you want to share. So it's user friendly from the user end. Is it is it uh, easy to modify or customize uh, Koha? It is. Yes. That's good. Anybody else have uh, other um, experiences? Oh, this is Vicki and we have been on Koha for about four months and I would say it is easy and yet it's not. You know, easy is relative to what you know and the framework that you bring with you to this and if you have been part of an ILS where everything is prepackaged and just sent to you in your email box and you don't really have to think because you've been paying somebody else to do all that when it's now your turn to think and kind of be the driver of, of some of these choices and the way they're implemented there's a a learning curve it's not terribly hard it's just more challenging to realize you're the one who can choose this and once you kind of figure out how this whole thing works you can be the one to just literally go in and fix it and i just fixed something a minute ago that i think was working and then maybe when we asked for a change to be made an unintended consequence happened and i was able to remember you know where someone made a change go in and look see what seemed reasonable make the change immediately look and see that I had solved the problem. And wow, that is so empowering. So there's that side benefit you're not expecting and not the reason you switch. But once you start getting the hang of it, it feels more natural. Easy is a strong word for us at this point, but more natural and, and very freeing in some ways, yes. Mm -hmm. Susanna, have you had some challenges or particular frustrations with Koha? Um, I feel like there are always uh, some challenges that you encounter. Uh, we're part of a multi-county cooperative um, Plix, so they are the ones that moderate Koha for us. So we don't have, really have any control over, over that, but Mary Ballant is pretty good about, if we have issues, she's pretty good about, you know, getting that fixed fixed and worked out with um, the Koha techs. Um, I've been with Jackson County for a little over seven years now, so I'm used to it and I can usually figure out how to make it do what I want it to do or can find somebody that, <laughs> that can do that for me. Right, well, that's good. Yeah, so that sort of feeds into a question I had about people, you know, do you have external support to have a vendor who's helping you or are you doing it all in-house and what kind of training does or i mean i'm assuming there's all kinds of training online for for koha but how good is that documentation and and what have you learned from that as opposed to learning from a group like this or from a vendor like perhaps bywater to help you Well, I'll jump back in because the pain is fresh. Um, the Koha documentation is comes from the greater Koha community for the most part. So when you go to that manual, it says easy to use and one as the internet up there. Yes, it's as easy to use as the internet and um, it, it really, if you say, I'm going to do this the right way and I'm going to search that help manual, sometimes that's not nearly as easy as just Googling it and somebody else has written something about it and you find it. Um, we use the Bywater training videos, you know, to learn the Monday minutes things, you know, and, and the short things. We use those to learn more. And whether you had them as your host or not, you could go on their website and watch their videos and that's really helpful to lead you step by step but the manuals could benefit from a lot of input from the community and you know heaven help me i'm not smart enough to be one to do that yet but but that would be a way i would be interested in giving back although right now i don't even know how to fix it it's just the searching in the manual is not great uh, any comments on on the manual
How about on calling your colleagues who you know are using uh, Koha at another institution or in another system, and you know just sort of leaning on your 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 colleagues? <laughs> I'm all about saying help when I need it. That was one of the reasons that we felt good about making the switch when we did in Okaloosa, because we have colleagues here in Florida that had experience with it, including some fairly close, but we knew, you know, Pasco and Citrus and the Wilderness Coast Cooperative and the Plix Cooperative, which is pretty darn close. So we could, you know, go to um, Chipley and go you know be shown firsthand by a librarian working with that product for real you know how that was going to work which is a totally different thing than doing a demo somewhere but th that would be the takeaway if anybody gets anything out of this is find those libraries that have this already and ask them for help and pasco and citrus were so helpful even in writing the um, request for a proposal the request for bid whichever one it was that we ended up doing but just to recycle those same ideas and justifications and not go crazy trying to figure all this stuff out on your own i think another helpful um resource is they have a few group like uh, acquisition group uh, community group they have um, system front page uh, developing group so i i found those are helpful because sometimes they show that oh i did that and uh, those are like you know you can say oh yeah i like to have this one they usually like they add those code in wiki but um those are like very sometimes very few people join those team and they can say yeah i can share this uh, code with you um so i sometimes get those code from them try to add this in there sometimes it doesn't work then i place a ticket with buy order and try to fix that so but i found this is helpful that way i personally i feel that i know that what's going on other people are changing maybe i like their idea sometimes that's helpful sometimes for me so Linda says uh, that the Kohar user community is helpful both with information you need and things you don't know to ask. So obviously, um, as you are learning something new, you're not going to know necessarily the questions to ask. So you're right, Linda, that's, that's a great help. And Jessica shares the updated manual in the uh, chat. Um, which allows you to search in the upper left-hand side. I don't know if that, Vicki, if that's helpful to you, but. Um, sort yeah. of, but, you know, again, searches get better over time, I think. And, and if you don't know how to phrase what you're looking for, isn't that the problem anyway in everything, whether <laughs> you're on Google or something else, if you don't know the, exactly how to phrase it, sometimes you don't stumble across it, but it's better than when there was no search that's for sure this is true and she also jessica also shares uh that you, anyone can join special interest groups yeah and hasina is also uh seconding that special interest group uh joining <laughs> um i don't i'm not familiar with all the interest groups they have uh like do you know how many they have? Can you give us an idea of the types of interest groups that are available? Is anybody here on the call on an, in, in, an interest group? Or is this your interest group? <laughs> There's there's everything from acquisitions and cataloging. Um, there's a circulation user group. There's a consortia user group for anyone that's part of a large system. Um, they have a system administrators user group that talks a lot about like system preferences and administration of the system. Um, and then there's even a web development group and they focus on like customizations for the OPAC or the staff client, like 
jQuery and CSS. Um, and then they even have a fun one that's like um, a book and crafting club that meets like nightly to share like just what they're reading or crafting. Oh, fun. That's great. Thank you. So it sounds like if you need some specific, now the special interest group, are they, you just post a question and I assume somebody answers or do y'all meet, do they meet like regularly or how does that work? Most of them have um, monthly meetings. Some of them are um, bi-monthly, um, but that the link there will tell you like when their meeting is, you know, like some are the third Tuesdays of the month. Um, it takes you right to a specific Zoom link. So most of their meetings are on Zoom and then each of them have a listserv that's powered through a Google group. So exactly what you said, you can throw an answer, you know, a question out there and somebody will answer it or, or share an idea or a report or whatever the, the question pertains to. Uh -huh. Well, that sounds like a, a, a good option. Uh, what, uh, in addition to saving the money, potentially, I'm assuming libraries are saving money using COA. Um, what are some of the other benefits for uh, what, what, you know, what keeps you, for example, with PASCO, what keeps y'all engaged? I think it's being able to customize it kind of how you want. And it's nice when, you know, like free upgrades come up and things like that, when maybe someone paid for a development of some feature, like, um, I'm trying to think of a recent one. There was like a curbside pickup little module I think they had a while back that you could, uh, some other system either sponsored, um, and then you're able to just pick it up yourself if if that's something you're interested in. So I like the customization. I think it's kind of cool. You can offer what you want. And really yeah. the, the patron side is fairly simple to use. So I mean, that's kind of the purpose of any ILS, right? Is make sure patrons are able to navigate it and find out what they're looking for. <laughs> well, that one hopes. <laughs> you want them to have a good user experience, that's for sure. I think I like to add one more thing with Robert is um, they are people. Um, what I found is I have been here for uh, using Koha actually in Pasco. That's my first time using Koha. Um, what I found is um, their people are like, you know, people I'm talking about, their support team is really, really helpful. No matter what uh, time you email them, um, they are always there. Um, they will try to find the report for you if there is any missing, like, okay, I'm not finding this, maybe about the money, like, you know, someone use, uh, staff use their staff account instead of like registration account. Um, we reach out to them or something, oh, what happened to that? We have the report, we find that. However, still we need help. They are always there to find this and make it this, oh, these things happen. So I found that instead of like sometimes talking, instead of talking with robot people, or like, you know, you are just say, you are just leaving the message, you really don't know when someone will return the call. But however, in Koha, uh, like, you know, the support team are always there. You know that they will say, oh, there is a bug. We are unable to fix that one until the big uh, support comes from the community or yeah, there is a way we can fix that thing. So you are literally talking to someone and that the answer is there. So I, I really like that one. That's my personal uh, personal um, things. Thank you. Anyone have anything to add to that? To those of you who are who have been using co-op for a long time, are you adding to that body of knowledge? to that open Q&A, so to speak. Okay, well, yeah, that might be um, something to consider. I know that uh, sometimes when I'm using open uh, source information, it it's, can be frustrating because you, you, you want to get to the answer like that and you have to kind of scroll through it sometimes. Or like uh, Vicki said, you have to know <laughs> the language in order to uh, address 
the question appropriately, to do the search appropriately. So um, consider doing that. You know, sharing back is always a good thing when you're using something open source, in my opinion. Um, for those of you who are using uh, or don't have external support, I, I see a lot of people who are systems people on the call. Um, and I'm assuming that there each library has a, a designated person who takes on this responsibility. Um, do you, you know, in planning that transition to an open source um, platform, I assume you have, you know, pretty much your ducks in a row. You know, what kind of planning did you do prior to making that decision? Or what kinds of um, how have you honed your expertise, if you will, as the years have gone by, for those of you who have been using this for, for quite a while? So, you, you know, you all are at different stages of use. So some of you are going to have, I would assume, very recent experience with this, and others, you may have forgotten how you, how you did that initially, because it's been a while. Uh, but what what do you think? So Vicki, I know you said that um, you'd only been doing this for four months, but I'm assuming you've learned a lot in that four months. Yeah, that would be true. Um, one of the things that I like is, um, you know, we do have external support from Bywater, but there's still plenty of things that you can learn to do yourself. And what I am enjoying is seeing staff members in our member libraries who have an interest in SQL, for example, um, and maybe have learned it in another place or another you know reason and they've not used it on the job before and now all of a sudden they are our unsung heroes in helping us figure out how to customize our reports and you know learn by doing and that is really pretty cool because it's not the same people you know that may be the experts in something else and maybe this is something that piques their interest and they're going to you know now they're becoming building their skills more and, and doing the self-taught thing and beginning to really make a, a big positive difference. We had a little work session for our library directors last week and um, had one of the staff members who has gotten pretty smart pretty quick on how to insert code and customize reports. And so we had that individual and the, the directors just, you know, asking questions and sharing knowledge. And that was nice. And Koha really lends itself to that kind of collaboration and learning together, mm -hmm. um, regardless of your role. So that that's very lovely. Yeah. So Robert, how do you and Hasina collaborate at your libraries? Well, Hasina is really our systems administrator, so to speak. She's our virtual services librarian. So she, you know, answers our help desk tickets for our patrons and also our staff that are having any issues with the ILS. And then kind of like she said, if it's not something she's familiar with or can figure out, um, we are lucky to that we do um, we, our customers of Bywater, sorry, I was thinking of how to phrase that. Um, so if there's any issues we have that we can't solve internally, we do uh, place tickets with them for their mm -hmm. assistance. So are you charged, if you don't mind my asking, are you charged by uh, tickets that you submit to Bywater or you just play a, pay a flat fee? or how does that work you know i'm not super familiar with the billing i think it's a flat fee if i'm not mistaken yeah. i know if it's we the, ever oh go ahead asina no no go ahead yeah you were right it's a it's a flat fee yeah yearly flat fee yeah 
I was going to say if there's anything we wanted like developed special, like, ooh, in Pascal, oh, yeah. we really want a module for like our books by mail or something. There's not a feature already in Koha for that. We could mm -hmm. pay to have it developed since we don't have like an in-house uh, coder or anything like that. Yeah, I think we did uh, in our system, we did at the beginning. Right now, actually, Koha had this um, preference, but we did pay it for our payment system that how we want it because our county is a little bit different way how we um, you know do our regular uh, payment system uh, we paid for this module and currently we are also paying for our um, museum pass auto check in and it will be auto um, hold fill auto like fill up hold yeah so that module is in process uh, we are with them so they are they're developing this module for us. So we paid for that, yeah. So when you pay for these modules, do they then become open source? Yes, it does. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, it's nice downstream. <laughs> Yeah, and also sometimes like, you know, if it's a bigger amount of money, like 15,000 or more, I know Jessica is there, so she can also give us more uh, insider. But usually if it's a bigger amount of money, a lot of people actually reach out to other libraries too that, hey, you guys want to join. So then, you know, everyone does add little by little and then the big, uh, bigger um, development does uh, work. And then it other people like everyone can, can benefit from that. Yeah, they, we call it like crowdsourcing. So if there's something that you don't see in Koha and you're interested in, in like funding a feature, you can work with other libraries and, you know, come up with the idea. And I think one of the most powerful things about open source is like, you know, if, if a group of libraries or one libraries puts together that idea or, you know, puts together funds to, to develop it, um, it gets pushed out to the entire community. So, you know, everyone then has access. Yeah. That is a, a, a huge, a huge plus to the community at large, you know. Does anyone have a specific question or frustration that they want to ask the group? Anything that's on your radar right now or that you've been thinking about, just like what uh, Jessica and Hasina had said? Um, is there something, a feature you're thinking about that you'd like to talk to your colleagues here about? So everybody's happy right where they are. <laughs> That's good. That's a good thing. So those of you who are using or have a vendor, is there a point at which you hope to not be paying that vendor? In other words, that you will have enough base information or feel comfortable enough that you would not continue to, to pay for that service. Well, my answer is never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I understand that. Me too, Vicki. We are all in the same boat. So is everyone here have um, external support? If you don't, you can. Uh, Claudia Praco from um, Lake County, she says they probably won't give up Bywater. Of course, if Bywater were on the call, they'd be like, yes, which is a good thing. That means they're providing good service and at a fair price, I assume. You know, some people tend to think, you know, I'm going to pay for this for a little while and then see if I, I can uh, wean myself off this. And 
maybe as you go along, you think, no, I really don't want to wean myself off this uh, because it makes your time freed up to take care of other things or because you have a large system and you have to be sure that you're supporting all of your uh, members or your clients too. What do you think the um, users like the most about Koha? I mean, obviously they're not gonna be comparing ILSs or anything like that, but what do you think appeals to them? Well, since you brought that up, we don't use the Koha OPAC. We have Aspen, and I was curious of the folks on here, who else is using Aspen for your discovery layer, pretty catalog. We're actually using it as literally our whole website as well. So I think that's, you know, that's where the customer experience is at. Um, we haven't obviously had Koha for our customers to have that to compare, but it didn't cost that much more and it is a very pretty and nice thing. And I have been surprised that more people haven't adopted it. Aha, I see Hasina saying, planning to have it soon. You won't be sorry, I think. Do others use this? Yeah, like Hasina said, we're anxiously awaiting in Pasco. We're waiting for it to clear the legal department. So, you know, ah. take some time. <laughs> so is that, uh, that's something totally separate that you're paying for totally separate. So they, what they've done is they've created something that sort of piggybacks on, is it only on Koha or other, no, okay. Uh, you can layer it. It's it's a discovery layer. Okay. Um, so I mean, so it certainly works well paired with Koha, and that that might be the best idea. But I think you can lay it on top of anything else or lots of other things. I would defer to Jesse on that, but it's not just for Koha. But it takes, in my opinion, takes Koha from looking like that bare bones economy model into a more modern, robust, the kind of interface you expect to see. Mm -hmm. And it really increases the discoverability of, of your other types of online services because they can be integrated into the searches and there's some really cool features that, that you can use. And again, it's that customizable, same thing, it's open source. so. Um, very customizable. Huh. Okay. So it's open source, but you said you were going through legal. So somebody's paying somebody. <laughs> so who are you paying? Well, we're paying by water. You know, it's the same thing. They're hosting that for us and, you know, giving us the support on that. And I would say that we're getting our money's worth and they may be losing money right now. I don't know. But <laughs> so we have lots of questions and, and have used lots of time. But that's kind of exciting, too, because you're on the front end of development with that and the feedback that you have and the things that you would like to see can become part of that bigger package that other people were, will use. Um, I'm going to put our website in the chat. Um, just so that you can see that on a real site there if you want to. Um, we're still working on developing some custom pages so that we have like a, a landing page that might feature our materials in a different way, but we're getting really good feedback from customers about the um, discoverability of just what's in the library collection because you have that look that is more of a 
Amazon or a bookstore look, you immediately bang in your face all these great um, book jackets and DVD covers and, and makes you want it. Uh-huh. Annie asks, um, who manages Aspen and you use Bywater for Koha? Yeah, we have both. And we actually um, implemented them both at the same time and just didn't start out with Koha and add Aspen later. We did them both. And because I'm not very smart, we also added library calendar in at the same time because it integrates fully into Aspen. So now you can have your calendar events searchable in your catalog. And so we got to learn three new things at the same time. <laughs> Fun. So Adam shared uh, the, um, the link to Aspen Discovery through Bywater, and he's also mentions, like others have, multiple ILS are able to use uh, Aspen. Uh, so how does it compare to, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of my discovery layer, um, like EBSCO, uh, discovery layer, or I think they're getting rid of theirs, though, aren't they? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, how does it compare to other discovery layers? What have you liked about it the most? Just like you said, it's it's pretty and um, it integrates well with other components or modules that you're using, I see. And it's user experience, too, because now you've got the ability as a customer to have a, a robust online account where you can store your own preferences and you can write reviews of things and you can do star ratings and you can interact with the library staff because your messages, you know, are sent to you there in your account and you just have more control over your experience compared to we came from Circe Symphony with the enterprise discovery layer on top and our customers just have a whole lot more control of their own experience and it's a lot easier for them to contemplate and implement. So I'm assuming these are the the people who are the biggest praisers are those who are the most um, digitally savvy. Maybe not so much. That I don't know, you know, because I don't know how digitally savvy you have to be to go to the library's web page and just see stuff. And once you open your account, it's pretty easy to understand what to do. It's it's fairly intuitive. Oh, good. For me saying that after having used it and seen it a lot, but I think that that is the benefit of it. And we had people saying, wow, I didn't know I could do such and such right after we made the switch. And you've always been able to do whatever it was, but they didn't see that and discover that in the other system like they did when we changed. And to be fair, some of that's because it was new and bright and they were exploring. Mm -hmm. I think one of the nice things too is that they can check out their overdrive um, ebooks or audiobooks straight from the catalog. They don't have to jump to their Libby app. If they happen to be in the catalog and discover there's something they want to check out, they can just do it with one click basically. Okay, your, your sound was kind of wonky a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me try again. Can Thank you hear you. me better now? Yes, um, I think one of the nice things is that when a customer discovers an ebook in the catalog, they can check it out from there. Okay. Great. And they don't have to jump to the Libby app. I mean, they will. It will show up there for them, but they can get it straight from the catalog without having to jump um, to another place. Nice. And you see all of the things you have checked out, whether it is electronically or through the library system, they're all there together in your account and you can work on them all and interact with them all right from there. That's nice. Does you can create ILL, all kinds of lists. Do, does ILL also feed into this? 
you would ask that question. I am struggling with that right now, but yes, you can do it that way. I know Koha has an ILL module, and if somebody's using it, I would be interested in hearing how that works. But we're going to link ours to Flynn. And so with Aspen, that'll be like having a link in the catalog so that when you do a search and then it says, did you find what you're looking for? And then you'll have the option to enter an interlibrary loan request or submit a purchase request. You have choices like that. So I'm, I'm this close to getting that going. Are others using it for their to, or linking ILL with Koha and Aspen? Adam, are your, are, is, your, is your group doing that? No? Nope. You're our test case, Biggie. <laughs> Go for it. We want to hear a report. Not next time, but whenever you're ready. Well, I hope by next time. I've been struggling along with this for a while, and it's really not anything other than the complications of us being a cooperative with six different libraries and making sure everybody's got their stuff set up the right way so that when we start this patron driven request function which we haven't done before that it's working before we put the link out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that sounds interesting now susanna you had mentioned that because you're a, a a member of a cooperative that you only have certain um the ability to do to customize certain things is that uh i don't want to put you on the spot do you find that frustrating or do you i mean understandably i'm assuming vicky from your standpoint or maybe adam or or robert or hasina that you you don't want people to be able to manipulate everything, but to what degree do you let um, your uh, libraries customize, or do they want to? I think we, uh, if I talk about our. Um our system we do actually what our um, people are asking for and our staff it's not that what is out there we are taking because it depends on the need right uh, what your community needs so there is like in koha there is maybe lots of feature in there but we don't grab all those feature we just do like what is um what we need, like our staff is comfortable. There is some feature like book, I think it's called cloud. Um, um, you know, the pandemic time we did uh, um, book pickup, right, from outside. Uh -oh. Robert, what do you call? I forgot. Uh, the curbside pickup. Oh, the curbside pickup. So yeah. um, after the pandemic, thanks, Robert. After the pandemic uh, hit, I think that Koha actually did uh, um, establish this module, but we didn't take that one because our staff was um, familiar what is like in-house, like we did actually establish in different way. So our people are also got used to it and we didn't change that. So it's not that whatever you have in out there, you are taking, you are taking what you are, you is good for your staff and good for your uh, people. Yeah, that's how we go actually. That makes sense obviously. Thank you, Hatsina. You are welcome. And we haven't had any problems with with Plix, you know, coordinating or administrating Koha. Um, Mary is really good about if we there's a feature that we see that we need. Um, she's really good about turning that on for us or getting in touch with Koha text to see how we can address that. So it hasn't been a problem for us. That's good. And our cooperative is a little different than Susanna's because she's got multiple counties and we have multiple cities within the same county. Since we are so geographically close, we try to have a more um, 
combined identity and, and present that unified front and not distinguish and individualize as much because the message we're trying to get out there is, you know, one library card gives you access to six libraries, no matter where you start, you know, you can end up at all of them. So we as a group decided we would not individualize the okay. experience, which is possible in Koha and in Aspen to give um, participating members a, a different look and a, a different catalog face. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. So it, it really what it is that you need and since we decided to go with that unified approach the permissions for the overall larger level settings don't really need to be available to yeah. people and in the individual libraries there's some things you can do you know obviously and you need to do but um not the big stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it could be a bit chaotic if you just let everybody <laughs> do their own thing. Uh, Vicki also mentioned in the, in the chat that Library Calendar by Library Market is the only calendar that's currently fully integrated with Aspen. Uh, and Adam shared that there are flexible permission levels that are customizable. Yeah sort of standard, I guess, for most software that's system-wide. What kinds of things would you, I, I mean, I know ILL is your top priority right now, Vicki, but are there other things uh, from anyone's perspective that you would like to see changed or modified uh, from your own uh, community standpoint, or do you just like it the way it is? I think we're very happy with the standard product. You know, it's not so much a question of changing Koha, it's of us adapting our thinking and understanding how to get it to do the things that we want to do in the most efficient way. And it's learning a new language, really, you know, because the jargon varies from ILS systems. And you may be thinking, we don't have a such and such report. Well, yeah, you do. They just call it something that isn't terminology that you would have chosen because you're indoctrinated with the, the jargon of the other product. And you just, you, you have to change the way you think a little bit. But really, it does what you want it to do. And there's more things that it would do that we are not taking advantage of at the time, because right now we don't have a need identified. But I think that once you make a switch like this, to give yourself just that cooling in period or honeymoon period or whatever you want to call it. Don't try and make all these changes, you know, get yourself back to where you were um, able to do all of the functions you were doing before in a streamlined way that suits you and then start looking at how might you want to kick this up a notch as Emeril Lagasse used to say and, um, you know, do a little more with it and, and reach out and, and branch out into new things. For us, we're now, you know, we, we're settled in after our migration and we're starting to put more of our attention on our Aspen side because that's the, the graphical interface and that's what customers really see. So once we know that the staff is able to do everything they need to do and it's working correctly and that's an ongoing, you know, tweaking too, but now we need to, to work on the customer experience. Mm -hmm. Anything else you all would like to share about that? I think another thing that is nice is as they are developing uh, new things, they make them available and not every new thing will be at a cost to you. Um, they are working on an app right now and we can access that for free. So mm -hmm. um, that's nice. I don't, you know, I think it still needs a little bit of work and tweaking, but it is a nice product that we'll be able to offer to our customers without any additional cost to us. That is nice.
Anything else you would like to share with each other about Koha or Aspen or it's called Lida and the app is for Aspen. Okay, I see. Well, Vicki, we look forward to your report on the uh, <laughs> the next quarter anyway, um, on the ILL integration. Um, I think we will probably be meeting in, let me see, what is this month? This is January, like March or April, uh, whatever works best for everybody. Um, if you have specific topics you'd like to talk about, Please share them and I'm glad to push them out there before we even meet if you would like or we can wait and discuss them once we get together. Um, please make note of who's on the call. So if you have a, a question or a challenge, uh, you can certainly call me and ask me who was on that call. Do you remember that person? <laughs> and I'll do my best to to share that uh, your name with them. Uh, but um, we certainly hope that you all will stay in touch and uh, assist one another as you can. But like I said, we're here to help you too. We may not be COHA experts, but we're experts in, in connecting people, I think, to some degree. Um, anybody have anything else they would like to share <clears throat> about COHA? Well, I'd like to thank everybody for being on today. We're, we're a little ahead of time, but you know, it's always nice to get a few minutes back in your day. Um, as Daryl mentioned, I believe the uh, recording will be available on VLD's YouTube channel. And we'll be sending those of you who registered that link and to the recording as well as a brief survey about today's uh, session. Um, we hope you'll take a few minutes to to complete that. If you have a topic that you'd like to discuss during a DLIS discussion, which meets monthly, please send it our way to anybody you want to send it to. Uh, if you want to send it to me, that'd be awesome. If you want to send it to your county liaison or somebody else on the BLD staff that you have a relationship with, please do that. In February, uh, on the 21st, uh, our discussion topic is library promotion of the Florida College Savings Plan. Uh, we'll be meeting at three o'clock Eastern and on that date. And we'll of course be sending reminders to you through the Building Success newsletter on our website and through social media, et cetera. Until then, thank you all for joining us. I appreciate your input and uh, thank you for sharing as usual. We are all such a giving group. Uh, until I see you in February, I hope. Uh, be safe, stay healthy, and please let us know how we may assist you in your work. Thanks so much, y'all.